Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Jessica Gem here. Welcome to Season 1, Part 5 of What If Midoriya Had the One Ring. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. And so, we begin. Izuku Midoriya prepared his things for his first day at UA High, while his mother frantically fussed over him too, making sure he had everything the young boy could possibly need. Little to say, Midoriya was a little overwhelmed and overprepared. All right, Mom. I think I'm good. I'm positive of it. And besides, it's no big deal. It's just high school. Inko looked at her son, crossing her arms and shaking her head, cutting slightly. Just high school, he says. Izuku, you got into UA of all places. And not only that, but you got in on recommendation for crying out loud. I may not understand much, but even I know that's a pretty big deal. Izuku sighed as he looked at Inko, nodding as he hugged her with a smile. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Although, classes for me won't technically be starting until much later today. I mean, you saw the timetable. Aizawa-sensei can't start underground hero classes until he's done with the standard hero courses, so I won't be home till late. Inko rolled her eyes at this. Not exactly thrilled at the idea of her son having to spend late nights at the school to participate in his underground hero course. On the other hand, at least she'd get to be home from work before Izuku for once and set up a nice relaxing environment for him to come home to. That being his favorite meal prepared just the way he likes it and recording all his favorite TV shows just for Izuku to watch when he needs to wind down. Izuku casually wandered down the streets and knocked on a familiar house door. The doorway opened up, revealing Hitoshi Shinso, who was dressed up in his UA uniform and gave a smirk. Hey Izuku, ready to basically just go through normal classes, then relax until our first lesson in the underground course? Midoriya offered a fist bump, which Shinso quickly returned as the holder of the One Ring laughed a bit. He queried Shinso about the whereabouts of his parents, to which the wielder of the Ring of Angmar simply replied that his parents were fast asleep from working their night shifts at the nearby hospital. The family brainwashing quirk definitely came in handy when dealing with drunks or unruly patients. The two boys wandered over to UA High at a slow and lazy pace. Whilst in the meantime, down a nearby alley, the girl known as Toga was jumping up and down over and over again as she pulled on Dobby's jacket. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Is that him? The little one with the messy green hair and the golden ring on his finger? He looks so innocent! Ugh, for crying out loud, Toga. Yes, that's the one, but I have no idea who the other kid is. He has a ring too. Doesn't look exactly the same, but I don't know, they both have that same sort of confidence. Like they think they're untouchable. Now get off my jacket before you mess it up. Dobby practically growled at Toga, unamused as he shoved her off his jacket to make the crazed blonde let go of him. Toga pouted at Dobby as she played with her knife, all as she leaned against a wall. Aw, but he's getting away! And I wanted to say hi, and maybe taste his blood, too. Darby simply facepalmed at Toga's antics, and finally brought himself to look her in the eye. You're such an idiot sometimes. It's broad daylight. You'd be surrounded by cops and pros in moments. Unless you had that kid down a dark alley, you'd be screwed. Plus, if I'm telling you that when that freckled kid activates that ring, he seems way stronger, it's because he is. And I'm not even getting into the fact that the kid is being followed by someone who has a ring similar to his own. But please, if you want to wait around here and surprise your green-haired Romeo, be my guest. I ain't helping you out with this one. Toga simply carried on with her childish pouting, but she wasn't about to let Dobby's warnings or threats that he won't be around to help her if things go south deter her. She'd be meeting her Prince Charming one way or another, even if she had to ambush him to do it. Given his flexible timetable, Izuku decided to pay a visit to the underground course homeroom. Aizawa and Nezu had permitted students to spend any of their free periods for the first term of the year there to get acquainted with each other and prepare themselves for the training that had be taking place during the evenings. The evening training was something all students had to get their parents or guardians to sign off on. Izuku earned it by begging his heart out to Inko and Hisashi. As for Shinso, his parents worked nights, so they didn't see why he couldn't go to school in the evenings, if their son believed he could handle it. Midoriya entered to find several of the individuals from the exams that he'd pointed out to Nezu, and by proxy, Aizawa. Reading through a small notepad was Suyu Asui, who had a frog quirk, 
It seems she did take the offer. Good for her. Next was a rather boastful blonde by the name of Nato Monoma. He seemed to brag about how it was an obvious choice he'd be invited to participate in his class. If Izuku didn't want to be a hero, or at least a figure for justice, this guy would wind up on the receiving end of Izuku's mace. Midoriya looked around some more, checking the board at the front of the classroom for the other students' names who got into Class 1S. So let's see. Seat 1, Izuku Midoriya. Seat 2, Neito Monoma. Seat 3, Hitoshi Shinso. Seat 4, Kyokajiro. Seat 5, Tsuyu Asui. Seat 6, Fumikage Tokoyami. Seat 7, Reiko Yanagi. Seat 8, Kinoko Komori. Seat 9, Toru Hagakure and seat 10, Shihai Kuroiro. Interesting. I suppose only a few students accepted or got into the underground course out of the ones I pointed out. Izuku quietly mumbled to himself as he ran a finger along his golden ring subconsciously. He began to realize that a class of just him and nine other students would be a pretty small one, but he did assume Aizawa wouldn't want his third hero class to be too much of a task. Midoriya also managed to find out through spreading rumors that classes A and B had both reduced their normal number of 20 students to 15. After confirming the scores everyone else got, the Greenette came to the conclusion that someone who would have been destined for class 1B was moved to class 1A, which seemed like the easiest way to level out the numbers. Getting bored with waiting around for the underground course to start, Izuku felt it time to clock in some of his required support course hours for the week seeing as he needed to put 12 hours per week at the bare minimum. Approaching the door, Midoriya heard the sounds of muffled shouting, followed by a loud bang of what could only be an explosion. He slowly and cautiously opened the door, holding his hand that donned the shimmering golden ring behind his back in a clenched fist. What do you mean you can't make my damn gauntlets bigger? And where's my shoulder-mounted grenade launcher I asked for, you dumb extra? Yep, Bakugo. We keep telling you, Bakugo. If you had gauntlets any bigger with your quirk, not only would they be unwieldy in and out of combat, but if you fired them after they're fully filled up with your quirk's sweat, you'd at least break your arms and at worst rip them off your body for the recoil from the explosion alone. Power Loader simply shook his head at the enraged teenager, as a girl with goggles and pink dreadlocks slightly cowered around the corner behind the support course teacher. As for your grenade launcher, I feel like I shouldn't have to acknowledge that with a response as to why we didn't add it, but you won't leave until I tell you, will you, Bakugo? Ugh. In short, weapons like that are a no-go for first or second years. You might have a chance if you get express permission from Nezu and the HSC when you're third year, but if you keep acting as you are, chances are slim. Bakugo growled at Power Loader and stormed out of the room, shoving past Izuku, barely paying any attention to who it was he pushed past. He's a real class act, isn't he, Power Loader? Izuku laughed as he shook his head, wandering in. Power Loader and the girl behind him gave a quick gesture to welcome Midoriya into the support course workshop. Yeah, real classy guy. I assume you know that one, Midoriya? If so, I pity you and give you my deepest sympathies. Anyway, it's only a few hours until the end of the day, so it's just you and Mei right now. By the way, no, she isn't someone who has the same or similar schedule to you. She just won't leave the workshop at a normal time. The pink-haired girl came into the workshop proper and immediately started working on a project that she must have fled from after Bakugo made his arrival. Hi, I'm Mei Hatsune, but you can call me Mei. You must be, uh, wrench, wrench, wrench. Where did I put that wrench? Ah, here it is. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, you're Midoriya. So that means you have that weird ring quirk, right? Sounds kinda cool. My quirk is nothing special. It's called Zoom. It's basically what it says on the tin. I can zoom my vision in on stuff, like I said. Nothing fancy, unlike your ring. Izuku gave a light nod as he listened to Mei introduce herself. Midoriya then turned his attention towards Power Loader as he summoned forth the light forging hammer that had become iconic for the green-haired boy. So, Mr. Power Loader, do you mind if I clock in some hours and work on some projects? Power Loader gave a quick nod as he yawned and headed back to the support course classroom which was connected to the workshop. Midoriya began in earnest as he started going through names of the new first years and their quirks, believing that his projects would be best made if he constructed things aimed at his fellow students in the other hero course classes. Unlike how Mei seemed to just make whatever her mind could concoct. 
First to come to his attention was a student by the name of Denki Kaminari from Class 1A. According to his quirk file, the boy was bestowed with an electricity-based quirk. However, if Kaminari overused it, he'd risk short-circuiting, as the file put it. So Midoriya decided this would be his first project, as some form of support gear to help the electrical blonde cover his slight flaw. After about three hours of working on a device, Izuku realized his underground hero course classes would be starting soon. So he wasted little time in putting the gear being prepared for Kaminari in a safety box that only Midoriya and Power Loader had the combination for. Then, the master of the One Ring headed out, hoping to avoid arriving late for the first class. Slowly, Midoriya opened the door, seeing most of the seats filled, but a few students had yet to make it. As Izuku took his seat, he looked over to the left, hearing what must have been Monoma loudly inflating his own ego. If Izuku knew anything for certain, it was what was going to happen if Monoma kept up with his loud raving about being among the elite. And it did, as the remaining students filed in and took their seats, an all-too-familiar capture scarf shot out and wrapped around Monoma's neck and mouth to shut him up. You know, kid. The whole point of being an underground hero is to be stealthy, so having a loud mouth like yours could be detrimental. Get that in check before I expel you on the spot, got it? Monoma nodded frantically until he was finally released, gasping for air as he no longer felt the capture scarf around his throat. Alright class, I'll make this quick and relatively painless. I'm Shota Aizawa, or Eraserhead. If you must address me in school, you will call me Aizawa. Away from UA's grounds, it's hero names only. Now get it out of the way and introduce yourselves and your quirks. Then we can begin the real lessons. The class began listing off their quirks. Midoriya, One Ring. Monoma, Copy. Shinso, Brainwashing. Jiro, Earphone Jacks. Tsu, Frog. Tokoyami, Dark Shadow. Yanagi, Poltergeist. Komori, Mushroom. Hagakure, Invisibility. Kuroiro, Black. This was certainly an interesting list of student and quirks, but Midoriya couldn't help but feel like he was being watched very closely. Alright, done? Good. Quick and to the point. That is how this class will be, and has to be if you even want a remote chance of getting passing grades from me. I plan to run you all through even tougher training than Class 1A has ever gotten, and before I hear any complaints, the principal himself has signed off on the idea, so suck it up. Needless to say, this very quickly silenced any objections before they could even be made against their homeroom teacher. Now then, today you're lucky it's your first lesson, so we're only going to do a few training exercises so I can see your quirks in full action for myself. You'll also be getting a feeling of your classmates' quirks too, seeing as you'll all be working together a lot through the next three years. Now to explain further so I don't need to repeat myself on this, Tomorrow you will be going up against classes A and B as they go through their first proper hero training exercise. I expect you all to perform your best. The next few hours were grueling as the students of the class 1S prepared for tomorrow's inevitable confrontation with classes A and B. So yeah, no pressure. Izuku was exhausted, and what was worse is he had to take a damn detour. Stupid cops and pros were looking for Sauron, and Izuku couldn't risk being linked to the new dark-armored vigilante. The green-haired teen had little to fear, but he still loathed the idea of using these creepy alleyways to get home. Soon enough, the creep factor was raised from a solid 5 to 50 in a few seconds, as he could hear someone lightly skipping along behind him, and to Izuku's enhanced senses, the unmistakable sound of a blade slicing through the air in front of it. As Midoriya readied his quirk and slowed his pace, the speed of the individual behind picked up in a near silent sprint, with the blade in the hand whining in the wind. If not for the one ring boosting Midoriya's senses, he'd be completely unaware of this incoming assailant. Spinning around, Izuku called upon a sharp longsword to block the assault. What he was met with was certainly unexpected. A girl in a school uniform with blonde hair and messy buns blushing ever so slightly, all as she gently smiled. Her knife slashed at Midoriya as she expertly managed to dodge the sword blocking her way, and slash at Izuku's shoulder, causing him to drop and banish the sword. <laughs> you're a lot slower and more sluggish than I expected. Still, no man is perfect. Unable to hold his tongue or wit, Midoriya instantly retorted towards Toga, 
Would you believe me if I said I don't usually have these kinds of performance issues? I'm just a bit tired right now. Hearing this made Toga burst into laughter as she kept her knife pointed at Izuku. Damn, I've never had someone actually make a joke before now. Especially after I carved their flesh to see their beautiful blood spray everywhere like a pretty fountain. I suppose I should introduce myself since you made me laugh, Freckles. I'm Toga, Himiko Toga. What about you? What's your name? Well, it isn't Freckles for a start. It's Suzuka Midoriya, if you must know. And why exactly haven't you killed me yet? Midoriya frowned at Toga, clearly unamused after being humbled by this psycho girl with a blood addiction. Aw, don't like me calling you Freckles? It's your cutest feature besides your blood, of course. As for killing you, there's no rush, is there? You just have to be patient if you want me to end you so bad. Toga dropped into silence out of nowhere as she dropped her knife to the floor with a clam. From the shadows emerged Midoriya's savior, Shinso, donning his armor that the Ring of Angmar blessed him with. It seemed that the ring did exactly what Midoriya had desired, and it enhanced its user's quirk. Shinso didn't need to speak or even interact with the person to brainwash them anymore when using the Ring of Angmar. There was one major downside, and that was he could no longer divide his brainwashing quirk to multiple targets. At least like this. Hitoshi could still use his old method of brainwashing. He simply had to pick which he'd use, as both could not be used in tandem. Are we gonna stick around and wait for this younger Harley Quinn to snap out of it? Or are we gonna get you to my place so my parents can patch you up? It won't be easy lying to them, especially with a knife woman like that. So I think we'll have to be honest about what happened here. But they know you, so the worst case is you'll get told to take it easy and avoid dark alleyways. Shinso spoke so nonchalantly, as if there wasn't a murderer practically a few feet from him in a trance. Slowly the two boys left, and after they reached the maximum range of Shinso's quirk, Toga snapped out of it, completely confused and annoyed that Midoriya had evaded her. At least now she had a name and a good look at his face, but better yet, a good look at his lovely crimson blood. Still, something was off. It seemed like this boy wasn't afraid of death. If anything, he had a look in his green eyes that showed potential to make death bow to him. Well, one more reason to keep close to him. Thank you for watching. Drop a comment about your favorite series or suggestions, and huge thanks to our team for another amazing video. If you're interested in joining us and you're 16 years of age or older, feel free to check out the team discord linked in the description. That's all for now, so farewell and have a divine day.